Good evening, I'm Tanya. I'm Celine. And welcome back to Demystifying News. Dengue fever, a viral disease spread by infected mosquitoes, has been on the rise in the last decade. As there is no approved medication or vaccine for the disease, it has been a hot area for researchers in developing treatment and prevention methods. On January 16th, the University of California, located in San Diego, made an alarming discovery and published their findings within the PLOS Pathogen Scientific Research Journal. They report that they have potentially found a solution for dengue fever. The team was led by several biologists, along with Dr. Omar Akbari, and was a joint project between the University of California, San Diego, and the Vanderbilt University Medical Center. This marks the first genetic engineered approach in mosquitoes as a target to all four types of dengue fever, as previous designs for suppression of transmission only targeted single strains. We have our demystifying news reporter, Basil, at the University of California with more information about this discovery. Basil? Thank you, Tanya. I'm here in sunny San Diego at the University of California San Diego Research Facility. The research team from Dr. Omar Akbari's lab has discovered a new way to manipulate the genes in mosquitoes to effectively halt the transmission of dengue fever. The team of researchers worked with Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, which were engineered to express an antibody known to hinder the replication of the virus within the mosquito. Dr. Akbari states that it is a very powerful approach. Basil, how exactly are these mosquitoes genetically engineered? How does this stop transmission in the long run when these mosquitoes are released into the environment? Oh, female Aedes aegypti mosquitoes were designed to synthetically express an antibody named cargo. Once the mosquito feeds on some blood, the antibody is then triggered, defeating the dengue that already exists within the mosquito. Its application for long-term prevention of dengue was discussed with Dr. Akbari. He stated that the engineered mosquitoes could be easily paired with the genetic engineering technology capable of spreading cargo throughout the dengue mosquito population. Thank you, Basil. We will be back after a short commercial break. Do you like to travel? Are you planning to go to countries such as Brazil, India, or South Africa? Then get your dengue vaccine today, especially if you plan on traveling to tropical areas of the world. Dengue is a mosquito-borne viral disease that has spread rapidly to many popular destinations. The virus is transmitted by female Aedes mosquitoes and affects up to 400 million people annually. Dengue fever is widespread throughout tropical hotspots and travel destinations, mainly in India and Latin America. Dengue fever can cause severe symptoms like insomnia, increased heart rate, fever, rashes, and intense joint, muscle, and bone pain. The transmission of dengue fever is through the bite of an Aedes mosquito infected with a dengue virus. Dengue fever can't be transmitted directly from one person to another, and one must be bitten by an infected mosquito to get the virus. Talk to your doctor today about getting a dengue vaccine. We are back with our reporter, Davina, who is now with Aaron Roberts, a PhD candidate in the Department of Philosophy at McMaster University. He specializes in applied ethics and policy research, aiding researchers to discern and navigate the best possible path through obstacles to the real world implementation of innovative technologies and approaches. Let's hear from Davina and Aaron. Welcome back to the Mystifying News. I'm Davina and we're here with Aaron Roberts. Will there be any implications on the environment or the ecosystem? That's an open question still. Um, there are initial um, opinions by experts on ecology uh, and, uh, and uh, ecological webs that suggest that it's unlikely that uh, uh, collapsing a single given mosquito population would have uh, severe effects on uh, the given environment, mm -hmm. um, but it is an area that needs more research. There are over 3,500 species of mosquito, so what you do to one species doesn't necessarily happen to all of them. Will there be any ethical implications of implementing this technology onto mosquitoes? Well, the ethical questions around this issue uh, 
they kind of fall into two categories. There's, there's the broad category of should we uh, be bioengineering? Should we be changing uh, a, a mosquito population to suit our needs? Um, or should we be intentionally collapsing a mosquito population for our needs? That's one question, should we do it at all? The uh, broader uh, basket of questions comes about once we decide we're going to. How do we do it? What obligations are owed to communities in which we might use this technology? Right. Um, uh, what obligations are owed uh, to neighboring communities? Because the thing is, mosquitoes don't respect our borders, right? So uh, there are sort of ecological borders that mosquitoes might exist in, but they're not going to match up nicely with uh, the borders of countries or cities or what have you. So there's also this giant question of how do we govern uh, the use of technology like this when you have one country who for instance, has a very high incidence of dengue, and they're ready to take a risk on this technology, and maybe their neighbors aren't suffering from dengue to the right. same degree. Right. And they say, well, that's not a risk we want to take. Yeah. Well, it might not be an option to do it in one place and not the other, because this is a self-perpetuating technology that will spread across borders to wherever this mosquito's ecosystem is. Thank you so much for your time. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching Demystifying News. Tune in next Monday where we will be discussing the use of radioactive iodine at McMaster University and low dose rate bacotherapy.